I'm from Electronics Engineering, IIT BHU, 24 batch, and I recently got placed in InfoEdge as a data scientist. Okay, so the round started in the morning since it was a day one slot one. So it started around like 9 a.m., around 8 or 9 a.m., between 8 to 9. So the first round was 45 minutes grilling, then I waited around like 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. Then my second round started, it was one hour round. Then they asked me to wait five minutes, third, round, third interviewer is coming. And then the third interview started and then it, since it was ML coding round, so like it took around one hour, 10 minutes around. So then they told me to like wait five minutes in this meet only and the fourth interviewer is coming. Then the fourth interview came and then he grilled me for an, another one hour and then finally I was released. Then I went to give my other rounds that was like Qualcomm Core round one. And then when I came back, then I had my fifth round for InfoEdge where the HR met me. And that was only like 15 20 minute round since it was mostly information round. So that's how it happened. And like to keep my calm and composure, like all in the morning you can speak easily. But when you speak continuously for long amount of times, your mouth dries, so you have to keep drinking a lot of water. And between the like between the the five minutes gaps I was getting between the interviews I went to washroom and came back again. So that's how I did it. So yeah, it was very tiring process, but I made it through. So InfoEdge has like first it has the MCQ round in which you are given 40 MCQs ranging on all the variety of topics such as deep learning, machine learning, statistics, probability, and all the things you can imagine. So I would expect you would need to do at least like around 25-26 questions out of the 40 correctly to get to the interview rounds and interview there were five interview rounds so first two were very very diverse drilling like they will make sure that they ask you questions on python sql deep learning machine learning statistics probability and sometimes even linear algebra so and then the third round was like ML coding round. In this, like in my interview, I was given a collab notebook in which like I had to code. So they had the questions written already in it. So first I was expected to find if there were missing values, if any. So I'll give a brief about the data set also. So it was basically an MBA college data set. They had given percentages of five marks and they had given some at categorical columns also like work x or not or board or which they had arts commerce science and then we were expected to predict whether they would get a placement or not and there was another column of salary if they were placed how much salary they got like i demonstrated my knowledge by first telling them that salary is a leaky variable and if i was given access to this salary variable i could directly predict whether they got placed or not by just by checking if salary is null or not so they were impressed by that and they told me to yes drop the salary column so i went ahead then i had to check whether there were missing values there were no missing values then i had to check about the outliers i just did the data dot describe and i saw that all the percentages were between 0 to 100 so even if there was an outlier th that would also be a real data only and not some uh, not a real outlier so people who would have like blindly applied box plots or z score techniques they would have got caught here because it was based on intuition it was not they were checking the presence of mind then we went ahead we calculated the value counts for each categorical column we separated the numerical in the categorical columns we made a correlation matrix for that and then i trained a logistic regression model on that and that's how it took and then I made a confusion matrix and get to finally calculate the precision recall f1 score and accuracy for it and then I have to print it this all happened in around 1 hour 30 minutes and then the fourth round was a case study plus the interviewer wanted to understand my background and in, I'll give more insight about it now once I'm done explaining the rounds and the fifth round was a HR round Okay, so deep diving into the rounds, like the questions I remember 
in statistics they asked me about p value how to compare the p value with alpha what is alpha how to do you even define p value and in probability they asked me about nave base what are the conditions for the events ei in nave base they have to be independent and stuff and how does nave base apply in real life and like basically they wanted me to go from the base theorem to the nave base side like they wanted to build an intuition they wanted to check my intuition and they like since one of my projects had pca and tsne also first they asked me about pca then i told them about how pca uses svd singular value decomposition and then i told them about scree plot also and that's how they knew ki i knew about pca then they asked me about tsne also which is t stochastic neighbor embeddings and then how it is useful for cluster and how it preserves the neighbors using perplexity factors and then they are like do you know lda also then i explain them about fisher lda formulas and i explain them the intuition behind separating the means and then decreasing the variances also so that's what so on the ml side they asked me a little bit on the decision tree side also not that much and on the deep learning side there was most of the drilling so they asked me about vanishing gradients they asked me about exploding gradients why they occur and they asked me they were trying to ask me about weight decay also but i guess that and got it correct and in that i they asked me the intuition of behind how the model trains how does back propagation work the next learning in how, how the values go forward how we calculate the errors and then how it goes again backward and then how we calculate the gradients they also wanted me to know ki how i how i can prevent overfitting then we went on to discuss like zevier initialization and then he initializations for the loon dynamics respectively so that was on the deep learning side and they also asked me ki like if you were given time series data what kind of models would you use in deep learning so i went on to explain them are in and then i explained them the drawbacks of are in and i went on to explain lstm then gru and a little bit on the structure of the training and they were satisfied by that and on the linear algebra side i think was the hardest because honestly no one prepared for linear algebra infoj is the only data science company which asks linear algebra and infoj is the only data science company which does not care about your dsa at all and so like in linear algebra i was asked about rank that i could explain a little bit on eigen value and eigen vectors also that i could explain but they asked me something about null space of a matrix that i couldn't explain then there were some unconventional questions also like they asked me a little bit on markov chains also so that i could explain a little bit i went into the fsm side of markov chains and how to calculate transition probabilities and that's how i defended that question and they like in the fourth round case study round so the first two rounds were uh, about diversified drilling like they will ask three four questions each from all the six topics so first two rounds were like this and they were very highly eliminated because the shortlist had around like 40 people so third round was ml coding round and fourth round was case study round so in case study round i think i got the senior data scientist person so first he wanted to understand ki where i have learned everything from what all exposure i have what all things besides of the ml side have seen so i told them ki i started rl from my robotics club i got exposure to computer vision while working in interit i got exposure to little bit nlp also and how i got exposure to data science to my fest and all that so basically he wanted an all round check on me ki like whether i have been really doing ml since my starting or not and then like they asked me a case study also so case study question was ki like given all the browsing data on 99 acres about a person make such features so that you can predict whether the matlab whether the person would buy the property or not buy the property and this was excessively drilling like he will keep asking you until you stop uh, until you are unable to answer so around 5 10 features i made like i said ki like if the person is browsing through a lot of properties and most of the properties he sees are in the range of 30000 and there are few properties in the range of 10000 and few properties in the range of 60000 it is very less likely that he might buy the 60000 or the 10000 property as compared to the 30000 ones 
so that i made that impressed him and then like i also made feature like location like if we see the location of the past 10 15 searches we might get to know ki like if the person is looking for a house in noida then no matter how many similar features a house in bangalore has he's not going to buy it because location is a huge factor so that could be used for eliminating the proper chances so and a lot of features i made that would take a lot of time to explain and then they asked me about the assumptions of linear regression and like if the homoscedasticity is violated then how will i model a linear regression so i took them into the glm side generalized linear models and i told them that i will vary the variance part of it and make a linear model out of that also and i trained the weights on that and they were impressed because he, even he didn't think of it that way he wanted some transformation then i did say ki like did say a few transformations but he was okay with the glm model technique which i had implemented then he told me that if you are the sales head of nokri.com what what are the things that you what are the three things that you would do to increase the revenue so direct challenge question and he said ki like i won't answer any clarifying question like this is a little bit different from all the case study rounds so this is a different from little bit different from the case study rounds since like usually you would have to ask clarifying question you would have to make structure so i think he was also checking a little bit of company knowledge knowledge so i told him in offlay.com my turn it's most of its revenue from the company posting the company would require to pay some money to post their job offerings so it is a little bit cyclic ki like when there are more companies in the platform more people are likely to enter this platform to search for jobs and when there are more people to search for jobs then our ad revenue will also increase and more companies would be actually interested to post their job offerings on the site so i said ki both of them have to increase together so for that i suggested that like we should tie up with colleges so that instead of their own they, they having to make their own dpc portal and managing everything we would like have the company post job offerings on that platform mini platform and then that would increase our revenue a little bit and i gave two three more ideas also it would get a video would get very long if i explain everything so and that's how i solved the case study part and in the fifth round they were checking my company knowledge and they were informing me also about the company work and they were also like checking my willingness to work and all that so basically he asked me ki like do you know about infoids then i replied with yes and then i explained them ki how, how the company started in 1995 and 1997 or 1998 we got the jeevansathi.com and then we got the slowly moved towards nokri.com also and the 99 acres in 2003 and then shiksha in 2007 around and he was impressed with my company knowledge so basically he was checking whether i had done company research or not and i had done so it was very easy for me since it was my dream job so i had already searched everything about the company and then he told me ki like you would have to work like 5 days in office and it is transitioning into 4 days from office and one day work from home so i expressed my content ki like i am very much willing to come to office to learn from my seniors offline and he was happy with me and then he's like why infoids so i feel ki this is one of the most crucial questions where you can dominate over the hr so, and you can show ki like you are more than just interested you are a very suitable candidate so there i said ki like infoids is a company which deals with business also and deals with tech also it is it like handles the business part also it makes sure ki the ml models are you very very useful in real life they are serving real life problems they are serving real customers and such and i said ki like they are very good with tech also i really saw your ppt and i love the ppt i saw how you, you apply different kinds of deep learning models like transformers and stuff and that was really exciting so i know the the tech side of infoid is also very good and business side is very good and it is a very good company for me to join also it has a very diversified kind of work it's not just single product kind of work so like my ms journey started like but like ms one not batch one not one batch started and then 3 weeks later i joined Basically, like I was expecting a PPO from Nvidia, but then I couldn't get it. And then because there was a hiring freeze, like very few people, like I think one out of six person got a PPO in Nvidia. So it was very disastrous for me. 
so then I decided to join MS so that I can like work on the like interview skills. So when I joined, initially we were doing a lot of aptitude. So I was like, what's in aptitude? So the thing about aptitude is anybody can do aptitude. It's not about ki how much how hard questions you can do in aptitude. It's about how fast can you do it. Like even CAT exam is based on this factor only. How fast can you do it? So aptitude practice mattered a lot in the final test because like uh, as I practiced aptitude, I got much faster and faster with PNC questions and probability questions, which otherwise you wouldn't have seen ever since J because who revises probability other than maths department? So then like that's how my aptitude side developed. And I gave a lot of GDs in MS. That's what I think was very helpful because like I gave like 10 GDs were conducted and I gave nine of them. So that's how I developed my impromptu skills. Like I can just sit and then like given like 15 to 20 seconds to think, I'll continuously start speaking. And I'll keep speaking and speaking. So, and I really learned to build very great stories because like not everything is about how good you can answer it. It's about how you communicate it to others also, how your hand movements are. Naturally, it happens now. It didn't used to happen that much before. So that's something. And like, I learned to deliver great stories. Like if you hear my management intro, it will sound very, very passionate and stuff. Manipulative also. <laughs> yes, little bit manipulative also. And I, the one of the major advantages of MAS was I knew exactly what is the syllabus. I know what they ask in probability. I know what they ask in statistics, and I know what they don't ask for. So like, before joining MAS, I was like into deep learning. I was a part of inter ML team, so I was working on GANs. So obviously, thinking that linear regression, there would be problems in linear regression that I can't solve, would be something to that is unbelievable. But then I started studying the basic ML algorithms in depth and I got to learn more about the basic algorithms like SVR, like, like there are lots of algorithms in between the basic algorithms also which most of the courses won't teach you. Like most of the people know, know linear regression but how will you do linear regression on count data? You have to use Poisson regression for that. That Where does, do you derive it from? It comes from GLM that is generalized linear model. Everyone knows SVM. It's a classifier. But can you do regression using SVM? Yes, you can. It's called a support vector regression. So these kind of things. Like that comes a little bit with practice. When you see the questions in quizzes and you see that as one of the options, then you get to know that yeah, these possibilities are also there. And that's when you start to get into the depth of it, each and every algorithm. And then you actually understand them. Like, I knew ML before, I knew ML after MS also, but the way I knew it after MS, it, so, it was a very different way. Yeah, definitely I would recommend because like IIT BHU has one of the most top coding cultures and ever since ChatGPT came, investors money had stopped flowing as smoothly as before and there is a lot less amount of work that is required in software side. So although a lot of people will get offended by it, but yeah, software jobs are declining and you can see it in the placement seasons ki software companies are hiring less, lesser software companies are coming. You can see the trend yourself, although a lot of people will be offended. So yeah, and you can already see ki there's a grow growing amount of trend in analytics side, on data side also, because the future, in the future, data science will be a very, very essential skill. So, and you can already see like at least the lower branches have adapted faster to it that you can see that if last year there were 200 people sitting for analytics, this year there would be around 400 people. So seeing this trend, yeah, definitely for any data roles, MAS is a very good guide. They have good mentors. They have some mentors for tech. They have some mentors for product side also. They have some mentors. They have very good mentors for analytics also. And the mentors exactly know ki what the companies ask, what the companies don't ask how to prepare each and every line for your intro and for your overall interview. So that is very important part of the 